Hello my loves, I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you so much for being on my channel where we are talking about the multi-dimensional approach to rapidly and radically healing and transforming during and after narcissistic abuse. And I'm gonna talk on this video about when you want to protect and defend the narcissist. Here's what to know. It's quite interesting to me recently because when you know who these people people are you know who they are and you can see the game but no matter how spiritual you you are you know how connected you feel to your truth you can still be manipulated by a narcissist pretending to be spiritual pretending to be kind pretending to be good understand the game of the narcissist which is they don't just cause suffering they do some good things and some of them are very clever and very manipulative and very good at it so many people have very positive things to say about narcissists, right? And there's an undercurrent to them. So even if you've been targeted, victimized and abused by them, before you've kind of woken up to who and what they are and taken your power back, you will want to defend and protect them. I used to do it with my uh, parents, absolutely you know, I, I would feel very protective and defensive over them. I, I, even a coach that, you know, if I see something in the industry, you know, the people that I'd been manipulated by caught up in the emotional stuff with, you know, we feel protective of. So here's what to know. We've been interesting times in the world where consciousness is raising and people aren't always what they seem. And people that are genuinely here to do good on the planet do not also cause extreme suffering. So we want to stay objective and discerning, right? When you have a very strong feeling to protect and defend someone, especially someone you don't really know. What was fascinating to me studying narcissists, narcissistic abuse, their webs, their lies, and the people that they have around them, the enablers, flying monkeys, um, you know, people who support their illusion, is even when they don't know the narcissist very well, those people will feel very defensive. Why? Because the undercurrent of the narcissist victim story, the narcissist paints themselves as a vulnerable person who isn't really the puppet master orchestrating the whole show. So people feel very protective. I had a friend who, when I realised um, a guy that we both knew was a complete narcissist, I knew his behaviour behind the scenes, but when he was, you know... Anything was said that was truth about him, she would get highly defensive and say, well, he's like a brother. But in fact, they, they hardly knew each other. But her feelings were very strong because he was excellent at just making her feel that way, even though it wasn't based on reality, emotionally manipulating her behind the scenes. She was a very spiritual person. She was a Reiki master, could not see um, behind the mask, right? So your strong feelings to some people, especially if you've felt connected on trauma to them, might be part of what they're manipulating in you, right? Might not. It's not to be scared of people. It's to actually see what's true. So the first thing is to be discerning and objective, right? And objective. When we want to defend and protect someone, we don't tend to take an objective view. We don't tend to look at facts, think it through, and actually consider things. We tend to just react because we're emotionally charged, which is everything the narcissist wants you to do. Seeing this narcissist recently in the public eye, um, you know, got, they got exposed, right? Factually, they got exposed, filmed for what they did. But their spin-off story, their smear campaign is, oh, all the, the, the people that did that are against me. Yeah, they're just trying to shame me, but distracting us from looking at their behaviour, because their behaviour is plain as day. Their behaviour is plain as day, but their illusion, their projection is, don't look at me, I'm being targeted, I'm the victim, this is the narcissist, and they're causing a smear campaign, trying to discredit the people who just did their job, right? And everything that narcissist is saying in their defence isn't an argument to discount and discredit their actual behaviour, which remains factual. The behaviour remains factual, you see. Whether they say, well, it's been dragged out of proportion, presented 
um, in a way to target me. Their behaviour was their behaviour, full stop. What they're doing is a smear campaign, but many people love that person. Why? Because they've been doing it for years. They know exactly how to create followers, fans. It's like a cult mentality. People that love them, yeah? And on the other side, they know how to capitalise on people's pain, which they do as well, and they've been exposed for. But of course, they're in the middle of a spear campaign, which is activating a lot of people's defence and protection that have had a different experience with them, right? This is why when you've been abused as a child and people know your parents as someone else, they will think that you're making it up, right? This is why these cycles are very hard, very, very hard to break. And the worst manipulators are the ones that not only exploit your emotions, they exploit your spirituality, your values, your beliefs, what you stand for, and they represent that. So look for, is this person demonstrating like contempt for other people, superiority over them? Are they taking accountability for their behavior? Because if you said to me, you know, I've talked about it, people in my groups do, they can vouch for it. I don't like this or this isn't working. I take accountability for it. I don't just blame you and say, you're targeting me. You're trying to, you're trying to destroy me, right? You have to do what I say. I consider it. I have boundaries, but I explain them. I take accountability. It's different, right? I don't have a God complex and I don't have dramatically different uh, results with people. Some people saying I had a great experience, other people saying, um, you know, something completely different. They traumatise me. Never, never. There shouldn't be that much. Um, you know, yes, some people might give you good, uh, better reviews than others, but there shouldn't be this dramatic shift where some people, you know, have a good experience and other people have a very, very dark experience with you. That's a red flag. So discernment, right? Know that your need to defend and protect someone, if it's strong, it's even if, you know, that you don't know that well, right, when you really think about it, you might have seen them at work a few times, they might have been someone you followed online for a long time, but you don't know them that well. Use your discernment, come out of the emotional hook, because you will not realise how much you have been manipulated. If you're dealing with narcissists, in everything they do, subtly over time. This is how it works. It's not to be afraid. It's to be ahead of the game. It's to not be as reactive, to sit back. I always talk about the pause and create a pause. It's not to, to think the worst in people, but it's certainly not to give them the benefit of the doubt before they've earned it either. It's to be highly objective, to be have hold of yourself, right? Now, as soon as someone has created some kind of relationship with you, especially when it comes to in a time when you felt pain, right? You may have a bond to them that's a trauma bond. If, they, if you shared trauma, that kind of stuff. So you've got to be discerning. You've got to be real and you've, well, you haven't got to, but in order to be awake in this, we've got to be much more discerning than that. Understand that, um, we get to objectively look and consider things, right? Rather than discount them because we've got, a, if you've got a strong urge with someone that you don't know very well to defend and protect them, you've, you're emotionally charged, but are you being objective? Are you looking at all, uh, at the whole of things? Because for most people, they don't set out to smear people. Only narcissists do. So when narcissist is claiming someone's just out to get them, it's because the narcissist themselves is already um, on a smear campaign and they have been exposed in some way and the narcissist does not like when people um, see behind the mask. The particular thing I'm talking about, the, the narcissist didn't expect people, to, they didn't even, I don't think, <laughs> expect that people would, they've gone so far in their own mania, egomania, I don't think they thought people would see through it. And of course people question their behaviour and that is, is when a narcissist starts going down their next sequence of, of completely discrediting the people that have just exposed them and told the truth, which is why it's so difficult. You can't believe every whistleblower, right? We have to think for ourselves. Some people have got bad intentions. So how do we make sense of this world? We're objective, we're discerning. We, we know when we're feeling good. We know when someone is actually taking us to a more positive, expansive vibration. And if it feels, if it feels a bit like 
cult mentality, if it feels like fear-based, if it feels like you've got to do this or else you're going to die. Anything fear-based is an illusion and actually evoking the wrong emotions in you. I don't tell people if you, if you, you know, <laughs> I don't fear people into their own sovereignty and salvation to some extent you know what I mean if, if if you're doing something out of superstition if you're doing it out of fear I teach people all the time in my groups when they talk when we talk about energy protections and things like that if it feels expansive to you do it and abundant and expansive and life-giving but if you are doing it out of superstition because you're so scared right that you think if I don't do this then something bad will happen and you know you're you're going into th into certain ways of trying to heal but actually you're being feared into it you're scared in it and you're scared if you don't do it this way something you know the energy is so different and anything fear-based is a is a red flag you shouldn't be feared into your healing. You shouldn't be feared into believing someone. And, you know, you sh definitely shouldn't be re-traumatised in, um, <laughs> in healing trauma. So stay objective. We're at a time in the world where lots of things are going to be shown. We're, we're going through a whole paradigm shift right now. And um, as, you know, <laughs> as, as we elevate consciousness on the planet, lots of things will be brought to light. So it's not about being scared. It's not about being suspicious. It's about seeing things for what they are, no matter if you, even if you have a strong emotion, we've all had strong emotions towards our abusers and don't have any doubt that a lot of them are in the public eye. Lots of love, guys. I'll speak to you soon.